Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video I will be reviewing the ASUS 6Z after 10 days of usage. By the way guys, this is the same phone launched as ASUS Zen Phone 6 in other countries so review is gonna be the same for both phones. Now ASUS has launched this phone in 3 variants, base variant starts at 32,000 rupees for 6 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. Other two variants are priced at 35,000 rupees for 6 GB and 128 GB storage and finally 40,000 rupees for 8 GB of RAM and 256 GB of storage. I have the middle variant with 6 GB of RAM and 128 GB of storage. When ASUS has first launched this phone, I thought who would wanna buy a phone with such a big flip camera? But after using it for 10 days, I was pleasantly surprised and really appreciate that flip camera. So without any further delays, let's just dive into the review. Now in terms of design and build, I really don't have any major complaints. There are some things that can be improved which I'll talk about in a minute. Now this is how the phone looks on the front and this is how the phone looks on the back. On the front it's protected by a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 6 and on the back it is a 3D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 3 for protection. Now the display has pretty small bezels all around, there is no notch or any punch hole design so you get that massive display which is great for watching videos and even playing games. Now on the right side it has the power and volume buttons made of metal which have a nice clicky feel to them and also are sufficiently elevated. Now above these buttons we also get a dedicated button for Google Assistant which can do three different things. A single tap, double tap and long press. It's definitely great to have a dedicated button for Google Assistant but the positioning is pretty bad. They could have put it on the left side which is pretty much plain except for the SIM card tray. So that's a little thing that I didn't like about the design. Next this phone has a thickness of 9.1mm and weighs 190 grams. In hand it definitely feels thicker and has a nice bit of weight to it but weight distribution is pretty good. After using the phone for 2-3 to three days, I got used to it and phone didn't felt all that heavy. Now like with any other phone with a glass build, this phone is also a fingerprint magnet. It is super slippery and obviously it is super fragile. I wish ASUS could have put in a better case for a unique looking phone like this. Now in the hardware department, this phone comes with all the basic sensors and it even has NFC. And unlike any other flagship out there, this phone also has an LED notification light, FM radio, a dedicated SD card slot which is pretty rare to find in a flagship phone. Even the haptic feedback on this phone is pretty good. Well it's not great but it's definitely better than the Redmi K20 Pro. Now ASUS also tried to cut down the cost by using a regular fingerprint scanner instead of an in-display fingerprint scanner. So we got the fingerprint scanner on the back, it is kinda small but it is pretty fast and usable. You also get a nice gesture to pull down the notification bar when you swipe down on the fingerprint scanner which is pretty cool. Now this phone also supports face unlock feature but it is pretty slow. First of all you need to wake up your phone and then do a swipe up gesture on the lock screen and then the camera flips and then tries to recognize your face. In good lighting conditions it is pretty fast but in low lighting conditions it just doesn't work. Overall it takes about 2-3 to three seconds to unlock the phone and as I said in low lighting conditions it even misses. So I would rather use the fingerprint scanner instead. Now one of the most interesting feature about this phone is definitely this flip camera. And whenever you switch to the front camera it flips and makes an annoying sound like this. So here's the sound. And it's kind of irritating we can kind of manage with a flip camera sound but it doesn't make a lot of difference either. Like with any other phone with a pop-up camera even I'm worried about this flip mechanism. What if I drop this phone and something happens to this flip camera? Just for a quick reference, the glass that protects the camera costs 8000 rupees. So breaking your phone or dropping your phone is gonna be a pretty big deal. And about the flip camera, I've recently found out that it uses some liquid metal technology and we can do things like this, like swinging the phone. Well, we are not supposed to do that, but even if you do that, nothing happens, that's the point. So it seems like ASUS is using some pretty good mechanism, but at the end of the day, I'm really not confident about this flip camera thing. Now let's talk about the display. This phone sports a 6.4 inch IPS display with Full HD Plus resolution, 92% screen to body ratio, it has HDR10 support and 600 nits of brightness. Overall display on this phone is pretty good, it is definitely one of the best IPS panels out there. Viewing angles are great, sunlight legibility as I've said is also great because of that 600 nits of brightness. The only thing that I miss or don't like about this phone would be the lack of an AMOLED display. Well ASUS tried to cut down the cost so we have to deal with it. Well, it's not an AMOLED display, but still a pretty good display nonetheless. Now the cameras on this phone are definitely the most highlighting thing about this phone. Well, they do come with that flip camera thing. So overall cameras on this phone are definitely the most highlighting thing about this phone. 
on the rear or it just has two cameras a 48 megapixel primary camera with sony imx586 sensor with f1.7 9 aperture and a 13 megapixel wide angle camera with f2.4 aperture and an ultra wide 125 degree field of view because of the flip mechanism these two cameras are used for the rear and front we have seen many flagship phones using the same imx586 sensor and it is pretty good rear camera shots in good lighting conditions are really good in low lighting conditions there is a lot to improve As the same 48 megapixel camera is used for selfies, selfies on this phone look really good, like comparatively way better than any other phone in this price segment. So that's a huge advantage. You can also take selfies using the wide angle camera, so that's once again great if you like to take group selfies. This phone supports electronic image stabilization for both the cameras, that's the primary camera and the wide angle camera. And interestingly, even when you use it as a front camera, it supports electronic image stabilization. So the footage from the front camera is exceptionally good. And it's also great for vlogging. Now because of this flip camera we have some interesting features like a panorama mode where you don't have to move. Camera moves itself and gives you a nice panorama. It also has motion tracking which looks pretty cool. Even though these two features might sound crazy they're not that usable. Like you have to hold your phone steadily as long as that camera moves which is pretty hard. At least for me. So guys overall cameras on this phone are pretty good in good lighting conditions. They can take some pretty good pictures but in low lighting conditions quality does suffer. Now software is the department where this phone is lacking a bit. Well not lacking to be precise but there's no consistency. Asus calls it the new UI but it's like a combination of Zen UI and stock Android. It doesn't look like stock Android or Zen UI and it's somewhere in between. Overall user interface just doesn't seem to be consistent. With that said everything is pretty smooth so far. It also comes with some pretty cool software features. You can check out my video on best features and tips and tricks to know more about all the features offered by this phone. I think the most highlighting features would be the dark mode which Asus likes to call color scheme mode and game genie or the gaming mode on this phone is really special. We have something called as macros where we can record actions and play them while playing games which is a pretty cool feature. Overall software experience has been pretty good. I wish this phone received updates much faster. That's all. Now for performance, this phone sports the latest and greatest Snapdragon 855 processor with Adreno 640 GPU. Just like benchmark scores, performance of this phone is pretty great, just like you would expect from a flagship. Even memory management is pretty good, most of the applications I've used were always in memory. And when it comes to gaming, I've tried playing PUBG in its highest graphic settings and still everything ran pretty smoothly. There are no heating issues either. Even after playing PUBG continuously for one hour, phone did get hot but it's still manageable, it didn't get insanely hot. In my heat test where I take pictures continuously for 3 minutes at a room temperature of 26 degrees, phone reached a maximum of 48 degrees. Now that's definitely hot, but still manageable, you can still use your phone and there was no throttling going on. So overall performance of this phone is pretty good, it does get a bit warm, but there are no heating issues and no throttling as well. Now in the audio department, this is one of the few phones that come with stereo speakers in this price segment. And the speakers sound pretty loud. At maximum volume, there is a bit of distortion, but if you reduce the volume, it would be much better. It also has a dedicated outdoor mode, which could crank up the volume even further at the cost of quality. Overall, it has its flaws, but still it is pretty loud and pretty good. Here's a quick audio sample. Now this phone also comes with the 3.5mm audio jack and supports high resolution audio and DTS audio enhancement. Audio experience on this phone is definitely better than most phones in the same price segment. It even offers audio enhancement even when you are using a Bluetooth headset. So that's pretty unique as well. Now finally in the battery department, this phone sports a massive 5000mAh battery which is probably the biggest battery size if you consider a flagship. It supports fast charging Qualcomm Quick Charge 4.0 
but it only supports 18 watts fast charger. Even if you get that 27 watt fast charger from Xiaomi, it only charges at 18 watts. It takes more than 3 hours to charge your phone completely from 0 to 100%, but the battery life on this phone is insane. On average, I got more than 8 to 9 hours of screen on time on this phone, and it easily lasted almost 2 days on just a single charge. So if you're looking for rock solid performance with great battery life, you got it covered with this phone. So guys, to conclude, Asus 6Z is a great phone and a pretty good alternative for Redmi K20 Pro and even for the OnePlus 7. If you really know what you want, you would be getting a massive battery, dedicated SD card slot, pretty good display with that flip camera, which is pretty flashy, and some smaller things like LED notification light and a dedicated SD card slot, which you would really appreciate in the long run. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you have any questions, comments or want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.